Just looking at this short video uh, in raising a few points around ammonium nitrate and urea in terms of production and use. Um, just as background information, ammonium nitrate, um, having been developed way in, back in the 50s and 60s, was always done with efficiency of use in mind. So it's very much economy driven. The cost of manufacturing wasn't the main driving force at that stage. In terms of agronomy, agronomy low losses of uh, nitrogen through um, uh, ammonia is a very predictable source of, of nitrogen. Um, in practice, uh, around a thousand kilograms per cubic meter means that f um, in a spreader hopper you would get um, just under 700 kilograms of nutrient 10 in a hopper, for instance. In terms of urea, um, very much production driven. It's a cheaper mode of, of producing nitrogen than ammonium nitrate. However, as we've seen in many cases, the uh, when it comes to agronomy, the losses of, of nitrogen to the atmosphere can be quite high, very variable, and as a nutrient source, it's very unpredictable. In practice, very similar to ammonium nitrate in terms of how much nitrogen you can get in a hopper. The higher concentration overrides uh, the lower bulk density, uh, meaning that in terms of kilograms of N in the hopper, it's very similar to ammonium nitrate. If I look at the primary manufacturing paths of both products, uh, nitrile gas being the, uh, the first uh, raw material for both. In terms of ammonium nitrate, the natural gas leads to ammonium production, which is then um, further used uh, to produce nitric acid, and the two, when mixed together, become ammonium nitrate. Whereas with, ammo natural, with urea, uh, the natural gas goes to form ammonia again, but it's then added to carbon dioxide to produce urea. So the nitric acid element does add um, cost to the production process, but overall, ammonium nitrate uses less energy than urea, and it also produces less greenhouse gas emissions than urea, which uh, we can just look at now. If we look at the data on energy consumption, um, we have average production here, and also a term called best available technology, which is, suggests is using uh, modern, the most modern technology we have, in terms of energy production and as we'll see later in greenhouse gas emissions. So urea on average was taking just over 50 megajoules to produce a kilogram of nutrient 10. The best available technology we have is uh, around 43 megajoules of energy. In terms of ammonium nitrate, um, the average is just over 40 megajoules per kilogram of nutrient 10 and with the best available technology we have, uh, which would certainly have in uh, our GB ammonium nitrate plants, that's further reduced to about 30 megajoules of energy. So lower energy consumption for ammonium nitrate. If we then look at the greenhouse gas emissions, which clearly is becoming more important nowadays, uh, we have to look at both the greenhouse gases emitted in production, but also what happens to the fertiliser when it's applied to the soil. And with urea, a lot of the uh, carbon dioxide that was absorbed during production of the product is released on application. And when you take the two together, in terms of urea, the emissions were around 10.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilogram of nutrient 10. If you look at ammonium nitrate, two distinct differences here. The major part of greenhouse gas emissions is in nitrous oxide from the nitric acid production. So in the unabated uh, plants, in other words, production, the nitric acid production that hasn't uh, the facility to uh, remove the nitrous oxide, um, the emissions will be higher than urea. However, our uh, GB plants uh, are now abated, all the nitric acid is abated, and that comes in at 8.3 kilograms of carbon dioxide per kilogram of nutrient 10, um, significantly less than urea. The third point I just wanted to look at was um, uh, the question that's often asked around global nitrogen use and why the majority of nitrogen use is as urea rather than ammonium nitrate. Um, we ought to say that most of the gas that has been um, discovered and utilised in the last few years tends to be in very remote areas around the Middle East, in North Africa, and to get the gas into a saleable asset um, production of urea is one of the most common methods of doing that. The term stranded gas when it's nowhere near a consuming country is often used. So the factories taken to the gas and, and the product produced that can then be shipped around. So the reason the global end use is 
uh, urea in the majority of cases is purely around the cheapest cost of production. Um, so the advantages of urea are virtually all around the manufacturing side in terms of ammonium nitrate, it's agronomy driven and the benefits are in the consumers and farmers that use the product as well.